My name is Yüce Kabakçı and I'm one of the Christians in Turkey. But I haven't always been a Christian. I was born into a nominal Muslim family in Izmir, Turkey, also known as uh, Semirna from the Book of Revelation, one of the seven churches of the Book of Revelation. I grew up mostly an agnostic. Um, I, in high school I read philosophers like Spinoza, Hegel, Kant, and up until college I never had an idea of a religion. In college, I decided to become a more devout Muslim and started reading the Quran. I absolutely loved it. I prayed five times a day. I did everything I could to please Allah. And then I decided to go to the United States to do my MBA degree. And during that time, I started thinking about how to convert Christians into Muslims. And to do that in the States, in the United States, I needed to know more about the Bible in order to argue against it. But I couldn't find a Bible in that town where I was studying. But during, before I got a hold of a Bible, I had this interesting dream in which I saw a man rising out of a grave. And then three women rushed to that grave and looked in and said, he's not here. He's been taken away. When I woke up, it made no sense at all. I had no idea what it was about. And three months after that, when I finally found a Bible, I started reading from the Gospel of Matthew. And when I came to the chapter on the resurrection of Christ, I was terrified out of my mind. I was so scared that I dropped the book and I kicked it across the room and started praying, please Allah, don't make me a Christian. I don't want to be a Christian. So that book sat at the corner of my room for about a couple of weeks as a magical object I didn't dare to touch. But curiosity, I picked it up again. I started reading the whole thing. And what I saw was quite amazing. I, saw things that I never expected to see. And then I talked with uh, some Islamic theologians and professors about why there are so many differences between the two books. And I was told the uh, uh, usual lie that the Bible has been changed, corrupted. But when I, started, when I started looking for more evidence for the, uh, the manuscript, whether the Bible is actually changed or not, my conclusion was quite the opposite, that the Bible is one of the most well-preserved texts from the ancient world. But then things got harder. What do I do with this man called Jesus who claims my whole life? He asked me to follow him with my whole heart, with my whole life. And he claims to be divine. He claims to have been crucified. He claims to have been raised from the dead. Over a period of six months, as I grappled with these questions from the Gospels, I saw a man and I met with a man from the pages of the Gospels that I never expected to see. He was so irresistible. He was so loving and compassionate that I couldn't say no to him. And I found my own story in the story of the Pharisees, but each time I read the Gospels, he came on top and he showed me a different God. And one night in my room, I decided to pray to him. And I said, Jesus, please forgive me if I am blaspheming by praying to you if you're just a prophet. But I want you to make me one of your followers if you're there, if you're, if you're there to listen to my voice. I believe that you've died for my sins, but I don't know how to follow you. Will you please explain yourself to me? And in that little town, I was the only Christian when I became a Christian in the, on that night. There was no one else, so there was no church, no Christian that I could talk to. And my life has been radically changed. Uh, I no longer was addicted to the things that I was addicted to. And, um, and I went online to find a church that was closest to me. And the closest church that I could find was two hours away in a different city, and that was the city of Antalya. Uh, so I would get on a bus every Saturday evening and go to Antalya, and I was introduced to this pastor, Ramazan, in the Antalya church, Antalya Bible Church, and I absolutely fell in love with the guy. He was so welcoming, he was so um, loving that um, I decided to become a part of that congregation for the rest of my studies in Esparta. And at that church, I have saw something quite amazing. Um, I met with different people from different nationalities, and they were all sitting in one table, sharing a meal, and having a great time together without any uh, conflicts. They all loved each other quite uh, genuinely, and that was, tr to me, the real proof of the resurrection of Christ, that He truly lives again in these people's hearts. And I found great fellowship in that church as well. Um, they accepted me as one of their own, and 
throughout the whole week, I was looking forward to going to Antalya every weekend so that I could spend time with my brothers and sisters in Christ. So during that time, during that trial time, when I first became a Christian, all of my friends deserted me. I was the only Christian in that town. So um, I had a police following me. I had my other friends uh, mocking me for my new faith. But every time I went to the church, uh, I found refreshment and I found encouragement to continue my, uh, my journey in faith. After my baptism, I began to sense this calling on my life from God into ministry. But I wanted to interpret and teach the Bible more responsibly, so I decided to um, get a more formal education at a seminary level. I moved to the United States in 2007, and I graduated from Redeemer Theological Seminary with a Master of Divinity degree in 2012, with the hope of uh, returning back to Turkey to teach others about the Bible, and to train others into ministry, so that they can train others, so that they can train others, so that all the disciples will be making disciples in Turkey. So I'm hoping to be ordained as an Anglican minister in Turkey and um, to teach the whole counsel of God to church first and then proclaim the whole gospel of Christ to the um, entire nation of Turkey, which is the most unreached country in the whole world today. Now when we read the New Testament, we can see that most of the letters in the New Testament were written to churches in Turkey. But when you look at the country in 2014, we don't see the same picture. The whole country doesn't know anything about Jesus, never heard of his name other than um, the name mentioned in the Quran or in Islam. So our vision and hope for this country is that God's kingdom will permeate the whole country once more. That Jesus' principles and his life and his, um, his cross will be lived out in the lives of the Christians here. But we know for a fact that we can't do it alone. Just like the church in the book of Acts couldn't do it alone. They needed someone else's help. They needed other churches' help. So we need uh, the global Christian and the global church's help to do uh, what God has called us to do, to call this country back to the gospel, um, which it once embraced. So we need, first of all, prayers of our brothers and sisters around the world for us to stand faithful for the gospel. We face many challenges, we face many difficulties, and it's not easy to be a Christian in this part of the world. But we know that by the prayers of other Christians, God is going to give us strength to uh, finish the race, basically. Please pray, and if you can, visit us so that we can share the good news that we're hearing all around Turkey that God has been doing for the past 40 years or so among, among us Turkish Christians. So thank you for praying for us, thank you for supporting us, and our continual prayer is that we would remain in constant relationship with each other for the Kingdom of God. We hope to see you here.